welcome to another video so this is just the card changes for the month we're looking at a few major changes to the game as you can see on screen magic illusionist's health is being dropped to one which will make it pretty susceptible to things like puppet strings any kind of one damage ping i mean there's plenty of those out there from followers like angel of word or even from other spell cards like magic missile i mean we've got lots of options to ping off that one health and that will make it very easy for us to proc the sigils over and over again. So, not too bad at all. Especially since now, with Puppet of String, for example, we could clear our Magic Illusionist and then clear two more summons. So, for one card, we could proc it three times, which I think is pretty reasonable. Then we've got Immortal Thane going to eight from seven. That should basically just slow down the Shadow kind of Immortal card a little bit. Playing it out on 7 was pretty big kind of tempo play. You get 3 followers plus a basically free one for turn 8. And was a really nice way to set up something like Ektar, which is completely fine. But I think this 8 is going to at least slow it down. You're probably going to run 2 to 1 of this card instead of 3 for sure. Might put in a couple of Cowies instead in that slot just to fill it out a little bit nicer. Then probably the biggest change to this set is Bahamut. Bahamut has had its stats dropped, so it's now a 9-9 instead of a 13-13 with evolved stats of 11-11 instead of 15-15, so that's a pretty huge stat drop. It's a stat drop of 4 overall for each. That's crazy. I don't think we've seen quite a large stat drop ever, really. That's absolutely crazy. Other than that, they also changed the fanfare effect, so it no longer destroys amulets. This is both good and bad for Bahamut. I mean, now it can survive tribunals if they're on board, so it means you're not worried about that killing you. You can combo this with, um, what's it called? Tilting Windmills. I think that's going to be the biggest one, making a more aggressive dragon deck using a Baja Tilting Window. Tilting, tilting Window? Wow. Tilting Windmills sort of card. So I think that should be reasonably good. Although. This is also going to be a harder matchup against Burn Rune because it's not going to clear the Earth Sigils. Portal also gets to keep its decent amulets, like its Rush amulet. And being a 9-9 stat line is going to be a lot easier to clear with a lot less followers. Shadow should be able to clear this reasonably easily using Hector. Should be pretty easily cleared by 3 Rush amulets from Portal. In general, it's just going to become a lot easier to deal with. But at the same time, it has some advantages to its own amulets. So that makes it a little interesting. And... That's those, you know, the major card changes, per se. Then we've got a couple of things from Unlimited. They're being limited to one per deck. So, Aria Guiding, Guiding Fairy is now being limited to one for Forest. So, you could see that coming from a mile off. It was either going to be this or Roach that was going to be limited to one. Because this card enables you to do a 20 damage OTK combo on turn 6. And that, against any deck, is broken as hell absolutely crazy for a single single card to generate so much power to go into a combo like that is absolutely amazing following that up though we do have a blood wolf which has always been an extremely aggressive blood card probably the most aggressive card in shadowverse i would say especially since it also worked really nicely with vengeance combinations being two damage to yourself along with the two damage to face so you could pretty much play it any time in the game and you'd always be at an advantage and now that we also have savage wolf you can go blood wolf into savage wolf and that was absolutely crazy for unlimited at least from what i had viewed i didn't actually play too much of unlimited but these two cards i had seen a lot of use in everything i'd seen from unlimited so that is pretty standard i think to have those two become the cards that were limited to one per deck now we are going to take a look at the actual change log and we're going to just get some insight into why these cards were changed and just some other smaller things they are changing. So on screen I've got the change log for the January release. Of course it is changing today when this video goes out. I'm not sure whether it will be over by the time this video comes out or whether this will come out just before that. But either way, it's interesting. So the summary of changes, basically what I talked about, sums up everything in this line of text. It's pretty straightforward and simple. I'll leave a link to this in the description below so you can check it out yourself. Uh, they talk a little bit about the game environment at a glance, and they say, you know, we're going to talk about rotation first, and that sort of thing. And it's pretty clear on why they changed what they changed. Mid Shadow, 18%. That's the highest use rate of all three of all these classes. 18% of, like, millions of players is crazy. So, 
Uh, medium pace shadow deck that balances between aggressive and defensive with Demon Lord Ekdar placed on the top of the deck's cost curve. That was usually the case. Um, pretty normal, usually you'd round out mid shadow at 7 quite often, and that was pretty much it. So, Ramp Dragon, 14%, the next lowest one. That's pretty much what you'd expect. Not too crazy. Um, maximizing play points in the early game, unleashing high costs during the mid game. Yeah, that's pretty much why Baham was l lowered, I think. Just to affect Dragon's real capabilities, while also it does, you know, outright affect every other deck in the game. Then, Dirt Rune, 13%, a little bit lower than Dragon, but not by much. Wizard of Oz and Earthrite cards pretty much your standard dirt rune, they don't really go into detail as to what was changed for that one there, but everything else, I think reading over it, you know, the win rates of these decks, mid shadow was at 52%, dragon 54 and dirt rune 53, so all over that 50% that kind of Psy Games wants to line it up with, anything over 52 is usually too strong, I think that's what they mention here. Uh, the first turn advantage for sorry, first turn advantage overall for rotation format is 52%. So just going first alone gives you a 2% edge over your opponent, which is really, really crazy to think about. That 2% literally is the difference between flipping heads or tails. It's just a crazy thing to think about. Uh, they talk a little bit about their design and card changes. Uh, they go into a little bit of detail about why they change certain things. If you want to check that out, again, it will be in the description below. They detail the changes down here, like in full, compared to the ones up the top, and go over the one card restrictions, so that's all here as well. It's really handy they do this in such detail. Uh, limited time, of course, everything, everything including the cards that are limited, will get full vial return, so we have two legendaries that are going to be worth full cost. We have the Magic Illusionist and... What was it? The Magic Illusionist and the Thane, they're going to be worth full cost, and um, the Blood Wolf, which I don't think is really worth even buying at this point. So, reasons for restrictions in Unlimited Combo Forest was 11%, Carabos Blood, another one at 11%, and Vengeance Blood at 8.7. So, Blood as overall usage rate was at least 20%, which is crazy to think about like that. And. Combo Forest was 11.3, pretty close to Karabos Blood, so they were both reasonably close. Which is fair, I guess. They were both extremely, you know, aggressive decks, usually closing out games around turn 5 or 6, so I can see why each one would have its place there. Uh, in, in addition to the three aforementioned card changes, one uh, one card each from both Forest and Blood were chosen to receive one, of the one card restriction, which is what we saw. According to our same higher ranking match data, it's taken in January, the first turn win rate overall archetype in Unlimited is 52.3%, so a little bit higher than um, rotation, kind of expected considering that it is more aggressive, and aggressive decks tend to favour the going first mechanic. So they detail how much you get for each one, it's pretty much what you'd expect. Um, that's pretty much sums up all of that major section, I believe. So, I can't see where it was listed in this, but I do know that they did talk about changes to the Blood Structure deck, I believe, or the pre-built deck, sorry. I can't remember where that's listed. But Future Changes says, we routinely review match data in Shadowverse, maintain cards, liquefying, all that kind of stuff. They just tell you basically they're doing their job. And the next, this is where things get a little interesting. The next change is the 15th of February on the announcement and February 16th for the change. That's really soon, guys. That's literally only about two to three weeks. I think it's just over three weeks away, which is really close considering how far that March change is going to be. We're going to have nearly a month and a half between those changes, whereas we would have had two changes in a month and a half at that point. So that's going to be really interesting to see if they end up changing the March date, but I doubt they will because the March changes will be leading into the next expansion, so I doubt they're going to want to put a change in the middle and going to want to put it at the end. But this might be the path they go from now on. Maybe they'll put next one in like mid-April, then the following month will be mid, and then the final month would be the end. It'll be interesting to see how that is changed. Um, again, I can't see where it mentions that um, they're changing the pre-built deck, but it was mentioned somewhere, maybe it wasn't in this news article, but in a separate one, I can't remember for sure, but either way, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, if you did, hit that like button and subscribe, and I will catch you guys next time, see ya.